It's game day, baby, and you are listening to episode number 36 of the Play Your Position podcast. Welcome to the Play Your Position podcast, where your story matters and we make it count. Here's your host, Mary Lou Kaser. Let's get started. Kick off, move the chains, and touchdowns. Welcome to the Play Your Position podcast, where we take amazing conversations straight into the end zone. I'm your host, Mary Lou Kayser, and this is the podcast that features conversations with and about people who show up and play full out each and every day. They are the people you admire. Entrepreneurs, writers, artists, musicians, parents, teachers, athletes, adventurers, and their stories give us a glimpse into what it means to be human. My goal for each episode is to introduce you to fascinating new people, new ideas, and inspire you to keep playing full out in your life's work in order to make a difference. As always, details about each episode can be found over on the show notes page at my website, playyourpositionpodcast.com. Hello, everyone. I am super excited, as you know, about introducing you to my guest for the show today, Meredith Burkich. Meredith, are you ready for kickoff? I couldn't be more prepared and ready to to take this on. Awesome. (laughs) So Meredith has a 25-year track record of leadership and expertise in the direct selling industry. Companies bring her on to develop field sales systems and add her powerful influence to network marketing models. Forthright and dedicated, equal part strategist and enthusiastic coach, Meredith partners with corporations and top field leaders to develop and maximize their success plans through go-to-market design, sales compensation and incentives, training programs, and recognition events. In doing so, she expertly and competently ensures long-term growth and profitability with her partners. Most recently, as the president of a thriving MLM in the commodity space, She took the company from $50 million in annual revenue to over $260 million in four years. Meredith believes the best developed strategies will fail when individuals aren't empowered to execute them. This is why personal development and excellence is everything. So with that, Meredith, again, welcome to the show today. I am super, super excited to have you here. And let's just jump right in. Listeners know it is game day and my guest is suited up and ready to take the field. So why don't you share with us how you got to play this position and what it means to your life moving forward? Well, Mary Lou, I can't thank you enough for asking me to to be a guest on, on your show today. Uh, uh, you and I uh, go way back, and you've been a dear friend of mine and, and somebody that I value so much. And I think that, you know, we travel through life, and we meet a lot of people, and occasionally you're fortunate enough to come across an individual who is uh, just really, you know, so special and such a contributor, and uh, you are one of those people. So, again, it is my privilege to be here today. So thank you. Thank you. So I think it, it really, you know, like, like a lot of us, you know, life, life begins when we're very young and, and really forms us through all of our adventures and our experiences uh, to become, you know, the, the leaders and the people that we are when, when we advance in years. And, and I think that, that, you know, when I go back to it, it really does begin at a very, very young age. And, and being someone that was the result of an unwanted pregnancy, two young college students in love, but definitely not good timing, uh, and then being kind of bounced around from family member to family member over the first few years of life, I really did develop as a rather awkward young person, the persona of being on the outside looking in. But what that really benefited me was becoming a student of human nature. Because when you're when you're on the outside and, and you're, you know, watching people and how they behave and interact and, you know, it really does create in you that that student mindset. And so so growing up that way, especially in the in the first formative <laughs> years and formulative years, I really did take my dad's advice, which was, you know, Meredith, you can learn something something from every person that you meet, every person, something very special to offer. 
And it's really your responsibility. It's up to you to find out what that treasure is. And, and in the game of life, Mary Lou, I think it's very clear that we all have a position to play. Everyone has a value, but it's essential to the success of the team that that is maximized. So, so while I wasn't in the game, you know, really for the first formative years, you know, I became very interested in the players, really developed into be a person that wanted to add value, not so much by my individual contributions, but more by reaching out to people and the players and lifting them up by, you know, accepting them, believing them and empowering them to be the best that that could be. And that's how I really entered into society during those junior high and high school years. Well, I'll tell you that recognition early on can be both a blessing and a curse. You had a, obviously a high level of self-awareness and recognized within yourself where your strengths were. But in those early years, there's so much else going on that can be distraction that, (laughs) you know, sometimes it takes us a while to really find our slot. So you have been a leader for a very long time. I've known you as a leader in the professional space. I imagine you were doing leadership types things in, in junior high and high school as well. Could you share with listeners a little bit more about the, the kind of corporate work? I mean, I mentioned in the introduction, you just took a company from $50 million to over $250 million in a very short time. How did that come about? Well, and I think it's interesting that you kind of mentioned the the high school scene and and being involved at the young age, because, of course, in those years, uh, you know, the game plans and the strategies and tactics, you know, helping people get along, they're obviously pretty shallow for the most part. You know, how does the girl get the boy, the part in the play, the winning essay? Uh, But uh, when you when you move into into life, into the into the real world, as it were, you take with you those central truths of understanding that the best developed strategies that you can create will fail if people don't execute on a personal level, but certainly on a on a corporate level. And so so I think in in, you know, all three of the of the companies that I've I've worked with, you know, over the last 10 years, I've I've really had to develop an understanding of of myself as a leader, as an executive you know, what, what are my responsibilities as we look into taking those strategies to the next level and making sure that the people that are really on the field are the ones that are empowered, uh, you know, to make the, to make the big plays. Because the reality of it is, is that we, especially as coaches, which I really had felt at a young age, I was much more, had much more of a coach bent than to be the superstar on the field. I just wanted to help other people win. But it, it came from, you know, n- being prepared. And so I think that, you know, getting ready, uh, you know, to look at myself and the, and the leadership steps that I have taken over the years and my, my big lessons that I've learned you know, we're really about knowing your team, you know, who, what do you have to work with? Who are the players? Because if you're an individual achiever, which certainly early on in my corporate career, I definitely, <laughs> you know, did, did uh, step into the, the, the pitfalls of, of trying to carry the weight of the game on my shoulders all by myself. I think it's common for, for most driven, passionate people. I mean, we, we see it all the time. And, and I noticed it really clearly, like with Cam Newton as an illustration, when he first came into the league, obviously took a lot of criticism in the beginning. And some people, of course, said, well, why isn't he being successful it's because he had a subpar team to work with. But really, I think that there were some other factors about that young quarterback about that he really was an individual player. He hadn't incorporated the team. He hadn't he didn't earn the respect of the locker room early on. I think he's obviously making some great changes and and progressing in his career. But for myself, I think that three things that I really learned early were were I need to treat all the players on the team once I identify what they have to offer, you know, or that pearl of wisdom, you know, and treating them and coaching them the way that they needed to be coached to be uh, successful, which of course, you know, the color code was very helpful for me. Fabulous work. I know you're familiar with it as well, Mary Lou, but I think that really earning the confidence of the locker room and and just a a funny quick story, but I I remember when I was at a, a company a few years ago, about five years ago, uh, and when I first began at that company, I remember their all-star player, their top, you know, their top pin uh, walking into my office as a, as a young executive and, and literally asking me what I was working on, picking it up and throwing it in the garbage can. 
and saying that unless I had the buy-in, the collaboration of the players or, you know, the field associates, that, that it wouldn't, it would be off or not, that it would be useless. And, and he was just trying to, to make a very bold statement. But I learned from that, that if we're going to really move those chains, you know, like you said, in a very noisy environment full of distraction, we have got to have the buy-in of the team and we have to learn to get their confidence. And I think that's led to the growth because it, it wasn't about me or, or my brilliant strategy or, or, you know, the execution of the executive team creates success in a company in network marketing. It's about the people on the field. It's about the people that's making it happen. It's really about, about, you know, empowering them through simplicity of the business model, the go-to-market strategy, uh, but also to give them everything they need to get the job done. Because again, they're the ones making the plays. So what you were just saying, Meredith, about getting team buy-in and, and making sure that as a leader, you don't have that feeling of, I've got to carry the whole team is such an important thing for listeners to remember, no matter what you're doing, whether you're running your own business and you're a solopreneur or you work for an organization where you are part of a team, there's two big lessons that we can take away here. Number one is don't be a Cam Newton in terms of trying to carry the entire team on your shoulders. It doesn't work. And Again, high achievers, it's our natural DNA to just want to say, well, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. But at the end of the day, it is really a team effort. Even if you are working for yourself, you're going to have to build a team around you. It may be your family, it may be people who are running in the same space as you, but you've got to have other people that you can turn to. And every so often throw the ball and have them catch it because there isn't there isn't a football team that has won any games with just one person. Being very transparent about realizing that in a leadership role, our job is really to maximize our players and get to know each of them. And you mentioned that you really love the coaching role and being in that position and you're really good at it. But who has been a coach or mentor for you in the journey that you've been on to become a really great coach and mentor yourself? That's a great question, Mary Lou. There's a saying that most people probably have heard that you are the sum total of the five people that you spend the most time with. And that's why it's so important uh, that we choose these contacts that, that we invest with so carefully because we really want to be somebody that not only we can give back to, but certainly that's going to benefit us and help us to achieve our goals and objectives and, and help us to be better people and better leaders. And so, you know, I really have three mentors, two of them, and I, I won't uh, embarrass them by, by sharing their actual name, but but one of them is is a senior leader that has taken a lot of companies to the top, top level and uh, continues to be in a consultant phase in his retirement years. And he is invaluable to me because as a young executive growing up, moving from the field organization over to the corporate side, you know, there are a lot of challenges to that, a lot of adjustments that you have to make. He has been invaluable to me. Uh, My second uh, person is much more of of a peer, but also very, very active and winning games on, on his field. And so he, you know, he's somebody that's able that we could just kind of bounce ideas off of, share the the good, the bad and the ugly, (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, but but just, just really get some of those. Oh boy, that was quite the fumble. uh, And oh dear, that was an (laughs) exception. And uh, uh uh-oh. But, but then again, you know, this is the one that really moved us ahead. This got us the next down, the next set of downs and got us closer to the, to the goal, of course, which is to score. And so, so, you know, I have that person and then I, I really, you know, look a lot at uh, uh, the people that are in personal development, not people that I know personally, but the John Maxwell's of the world written 70 books and, and sure. uh, I follow all of his latest books. And uh, so that's, that's been a big help, but I think just the authors in general, I know that, that the latest phase of, of my personal development really became uh, apparent uh, that I needed to develop the intuitive leadership area. For myself and, and really master that one because we, we get so much information, right? We learn, you know, so many tactics and, and we, we get our logic, but, but the intuitiveness that, that, that piece of us, which of course we're, we're wired to have, it really is a gift that we have as human beings. It really tells us where to apply itself. And so in, in working with that, there, there are three books uh, that I've read over and over through the years. Uh, one is actually a classic that I just picked up but Malcolm Gladwell's book, Blink, and that I read probably a decade ago, uh, was was very helpful um, as soon as it came out. Maybe it hasn't been quite that long, but 
in any case, that one really taught me about that, that understanding to embrace your intuition. And then, of course, A Leader's Legacy is, is another classic. But one that came from the 90s that's actually out of print that I love because, you know, you say, who are your mentors? But really, they're the authors or the people that have dedicated themselves to, to personal development and business development is actually a book called The Corporate Mystic. And that was one that was given to me as a gift over the holidays uh, by a field leader. And I had just really enjoyed that one because this really hit the key of where we should all be. Everybody listening to this podcast should be, which is how am I growing myself? How am I increasing my personal discipline, my integrity, my authenticity so that I can achieve all the levels of success that I want? So that has been the area of my focus really for the last year. But but specifically, this gift of this book that came my way has really helped me to, to get in touch with where I need to be concentrating my own personal development this year. Well, thank you for sharing those three specific books, Meredith. And listeners, you know that everything that Meredith shares with us today will be over on the show notes page at playyourpositionpodcast.com forward slash Meredith. And I'll definitely make a list of these books. I know you said the one is out of print, but still it's good to have the name. And um, isn't that by Gay Hendricks? It is. And you can, yeah, you can actually pick that one up. And then Ludman also, I think was, was a co-author, but uh, the person that got it for me as a gift actually picked it up uh, and used books on Amazon. Right, right. And so we'll make sure that again, that list is there because many of my guests have shared books as a way of saying, these are the people who I turn to for Mm -hmm. mentorship or coaching. And I emphasize this almost in every show, the people that can inspire us don't have to be people we know that sometimes a boost is only a book away and you just have to have the the self-discipline to make that part of your daily or weekly practice and Meredith you are obviously a shining example of somebody who not only can teach people about personal development but you practice what you teach Mm -hmm. and Despite the fact that those of us who are out there in the world doing things and we we are practicing personal development strategies that make our minds sharper and that, that hone that down our skills, the fact of the matter is, like in a football game, we get out on the field of life and that whistle's blown and now anything can happen. So I would love for you to share a quick story with listeners about a time that you found yourself playing out of position. You mentioned earlier about fumbling the ball, but... When was the time when you really just felt like, boy, I, this is not where I need to be. One of the stories that really, you know, comes to mind when you, when you talk about that is, is, is going through, you know, a time in business when things were on track. uh, And this was a number of years ago, but it's a very poignant story. Uh, You know, things were absolutely on track. You know, we had the game plan down. We had all of the, you know, the players in position, everything was looking really, really great. And then just got something that that knocked everybody off their axis and just really changed the game plan. It was a product related, uh, you know, incident where where what we thought was going to be a a banner product, a lead, you know, a lead changer, you know, a new flagship, just just didn't didn't pan out for a number of reasons that I that I won't get into specifically. But but what it forced us to do was really you know step back and just completely you know blow up the whole game plan and say you know we've got to start over from scratch. And I think that 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 was a time when when really the, the, the biggest standout to me on how to get through those times, because we'll all have them. I don't think there's anyone listening today that is going to, to not be able to immediately have a story come to their mind that says, shoot, you know, that, that really was a game changer, maybe not in a good way, but uh, you know, how you come out of it, you know, what, what do you do? And this, this goes back to so many quotes come to mind on, on that question, Mary Lou, which are, you know, never, never, never quit, you know, don't give up, you know, all, all those kinds of things you just have to, Success is just one play away. But the reality of it is, is, is that's when you have to really dig deep within yourself. And that's what that, that really requires the discipline that you just mentioned, which is, okay, I have to be extremely present in this situation. I have to to understand clearly that, that I've got to be alert to all of the risks that, that are in front of us right now and open-minded to the possibilities and, and listening emotionally to all of the, of the detail that's coming and saying, you know, what really is connecting? What is the why that, they're, that people are saying what they're saying? And how do I sift through that and come on top and, and keep this ship on course, you know, and, and keep 
this game from getting out of control, really. During that time, of, let's call it a product malfunction, it just required deep integrity because during those times, you know, people talk about human beings being heat-seeking missiles for insincerity, <laughs> <laughs> especially in network marketing, right? Um, because they so finely tune, you know, that instinct that we're talking about, that intuition mastery. And so what happens is at that point, at those trials, at those, at those dark, challenging places, you, you know, you've got to come and say, okay, I've got to have a clean motive and I've got to look at myself and say, I've got to take myself completely out of the equation and, and to your question, which is, you know, if you're playing out of position saying, is this where I belong? Is this, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? And, and if so, uh, if you know that your motives are pure, that there's no baggage or, or, you know, or ulterior dirty motive, what, you know, Taylor Hartman talks about in one of his books, then you're grounded, right? Then, then you know that your purpose is, is solid. You know, your mind is quiet and then you can flow from your heart and you can flow from what you talked about early in the podcast, which was, you know, really love you know, doing it with love and what you feel is essentially the core truth of, of reality, which is we're here to help each other and provide value to people. And if you know that, that that authenticity comes from within yourself, it gives you the courage and the willingness to to make adjustments, to, to switch things around, uh, to make mistakes. But understanding that vulnerability is not a weakness, it, it's something that we, we are required to do, especially in times of, of, of trial and, and tribulation, to make sure that we are pure in every decision that we make by motive. And that helps us through those tough times, Mary Lou. It absolutely does. And on a side note, I think I need to get Dr. Taylor Hartman on this show. I think he needs to add his oh, voice to Yes, have anytime you can. I know. He's, he's, a fabulous he's such a, a, an amazing human being with a, a body of work that is second to none. So, but yes, what you, what you just shared again, Meredith, is spot on in terms of there are going to be times when circumstances are beyond our control, like the product malfunction that all companies who have a product-based line, again, whether you are working for yourself and you've created something that you're trying to sell in the marketplace, or you work with a team that is putting product or products into the marketplace, things happen, right? Things happen. So the question becomes, how do we respond? Mm -hmm. So when we get sacked or somebody hits us from behind and the ball comes out of our arms do you sit there and pout on the field and just cross your arms and say, I'm not playing anymore? I mean, that doesn't work. Or do you go deep inside yourself and say, where am I at? Where is my center? And what mm -hmm. can I do to continue it? The, the result or the, the outcome may not be what we thought or imagined, but I can certainly control what I do moving forward. So thank you for sharing that. And speaking of being on the field and moving the chains, I think it's time to get away <laughs> from the, the, the ugly parts of the game and get to the fun part, which is scoring a mm -hmm. touchdown. So Meredith, you are in the red zone and there are less than 30 seconds left on the clock. You are down by four points. It's third down and it is now or never, just like our <laughs> ducks. Tell a story about a time when you overcame this obstacle and ran the ball into the end zone for a touchdown that won the game for you or your team. It could be personal mm -hmm. or it could be team-based. I, I get to pick. I get to pick. Okay. Well, I, I think it's all about the team for me. So, so I'll always run right back to the team because that's my happy place, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, Absolutely. but no, I, I think that, that when you get down to the, when it gets down to the wire, you know, and the game's on the line and, and I love what you just said, because, you know, you may have gone through a lot of penalties that weren't fair to get there. But when, when that, that crucial moment comes and, and, and the game is right there in front of you, you know, I, I think that, that what is the most important thing is that you were so prepared to be there and your belief was so ingrained and entrenched in your mind that you knew that you deserved that win, that you had earned that win and yet you were there. And then you've got to dig deep within yourself and, and ignore how tired you are, how hungry you are, and, and just really, you know, put a lot of things, you know, to the side. And I think that that what helps a team to really, really press on and, and, and you know, get over that and get that, you know, get those points on the board. It's all about going back sometimes to just rally the troops around you, going back to the original goal and commitment that you made together as a team. Because, of course, that alignment is so critical in those final seconds of the game is that that you remember what it was and that, and that you had done such a good job of making everybody understand and believe 
believe that if they would just execute, if they would just give their highest and best, then indeed you deserve to score and that that game belongs to you. And just making sure that every every moment that you have, that, that exact moment of, again, going back to that discipline that's required to be absolutely present, ready for anything, alert and open-minded and understanding that you were born for that minute in time and you deserve it and you need to just push it over. I think that that's what, what really helped us to, to, to get back on track in many circumstances because it, it just is about bringing together the collective team, just pushing that belief and just, just driving it in that end zone and getting those points. So is there a story, a really quick story of when you actually witnessed that happening with one of the companies that sure. you Sure. I, I think in. that one specific story that, that comes out in my mind was, was actually, uh, you know, when I was in the field and was actually, you know, leading, leading a team uh, myself. I think this one always comes to mind because it was so critical. And it was all about saying, you know, we had pushed so hard to get a promotion. And if you know anything about network marketing, of course, you know that as you build an organization, you advance in what people call pins, they call them ranks, you you know, raise your status based on performance. And, and this per- particular rank had eluded us for a long time, really probably for about two years. And we just, we, we just couldn't get over the goal line. We couldn't hit that final sales metric that was required to get there. We just couldn't seem to do it. And so, so what really, what, what I found finally, just, it just dawned on me again, getting back to making sure that I was providing the, the leadership and the goals for each individual person to contribute. Then I realized that they didn't want necessarily the same things I wanted, but what was, what were they in it for? And once I identified those things, what I did was I actually broke it down. You know, it's that eating the elephant one bite at a time. Right. And so I went to all of my top team leads, my top 12. And we sat down with a massive whiteboard and we just whiteboarded it all and said, listen, you know, we, we keep staring at this large, daunting sales goal that just continues to elude us. And this is what we need to do. Each one of us needs to commit to a certain sales target. Do you personally think that you can do with your team? You know, what is the number? And I let them set their own metrics. I let them set their own goals, which I think is really critical. And as each one of them set them and we added them all up, we had everything we needed. But once we got that specific and that granular, and then everybody went out and did their job. And that quarter we achieved again, a goal that had eluded us for a couple of years just by biting, you know, taking those into bite-sized chunks for people and letting them own and personally take responsibility for their contribution. And that's what it took. Everybody did their part. We met our metric and then we were able to celebrate at national conference. It was really a tremendous win. That's exactly the kind of win that you remember for years to come because it was the team. It was, you empowered each person instead of saying, you know, just go figure it out. I mean, you guys really strategize. I love the whiteboard. I, I can picture everybody sitting around and all the bubbles and the arrows and the colored markers yes. going every which way and saying, here's what we need to do folks. And, and you did that. So kudos to you. And as we wrap up the show today, Meredith, if you could quickly list out one to three key offensive strategies straight out of the Meredith Burkich playbook that listeners could implement starting today to get them closer down towards that end zone, maybe even from the red zone into the end zone. What would those so one I, to three be? I think that's, be? A, that's a, simple, a simple request, Mary Lou. I think the first thing people need to do is they, they have got to set their goals and commitments. I think that everybody needs to sit down, put a pen to paper, especially if they haven't done it recently, and say, what are my short-term goals? What are my long-term goals? What am I committed to do? What am I committed to maybe sacrifice uh, personally to achieve those goals? But what are they? They have to quantify what it is that they're working for. Write it down on a three by five card, put it in their pocket and carry it around until it's it's worn and frayed. You, really, you, you have got <laughs> yes. to articulate and put pen to paper on what it is that you want to achieve. You know, what is it and own it. And then secondly, what you need to do is then you need to look at your time. I think that you've got to say, realistically, with my current responsibilities, what can I commit to this goal? What can I commit to make sure that I I achieve this? And then taking those precious moments, because time is our greatest resource. It's our biggest big business asset that we have as entrepreneurs, right? Take that time and say, what amount of time do I have, number one? But number two, 
What are the productive behaviors that I need to apply to make sure that they, again, lead back to the goal? Because a lot of people do busy work, but they don't do productive work, and that's not helpful. And sometimes it's other people, it's relational, and sometimes it's just our lack of discipline or our procrastination. It has to go away because the third point that I would bring up is for flawless execution. You know, you have to practice and practice. You have to never give up. But most importantly, for flawless execution, you have to implement the disciplines that it takes to really be able to, to do everything it can to apply your time wisely and to be able to achieve that goal that you've set for yourself. Fantastic. You've heard it here. This is, <laughs> listeners, Meredith just gave you the game-winning strategy right there. Set your goals, execute them, and be self-disciplined enough to follow through. And I love the frayed index card with that that specific thing that you want to manifest and carry that sucker around until it is fallen apart and then write a new one (laughs) because by then you should have accomplished it (laughs) because that's how the universe works. I mean, it, it really, really does. And Meredith, what is the best way for people to connect with you, either online or well, offline? Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for that opportunity. I have a number of vehicles, as, as most people do these days, certainly on uh, Facebook, Meredith Burkich on Facebook. I have uh, Meredith Burkich on Twitter as well. And then I have Meredith's Musings on Blogger. Uh, need to get that one a little more up to date, but certainly reach out on Facebook. I, I love to chat. I've got uh, a lot of people that I love to connect with because this is all about connectivity. It's all about contributions and certainly just being being a part of the human race. I love it. Wonderful. So again, listeners, these connections, the books Meredith talked about, some of her amazing strategies will be over at the show notes page at playyourpositionpodcast.com forward slash Meredith. And Meredith, I want to thank you for your time today, your generous spirit, and your leadership out in the world. It is a better place because you're in you it. You as well, Mary Lou. Thank you so much again for having me on your show. And go Ducks! <laughs> go Ducks! Hey team, did you know that one of the fastest ways to boost your credibility in the marketplace is with a book? That published authors have a far greater chance to land speaking gigs, charge higher fees, Not to mention getting bragging rights and making a lifelong dream come true. These days, the barriers to getting a book written and published have pretty much disappeared, with on-demand publishing platforms like Amazon's Kindle and CreateSpace making it super easy. I know, I've written three of my own and I'm working on my fourth. The truth is, despite how easy it is to get published today, there are still a lot of minefields to step through on the way to getting that first box of books delivered to your house. That's why for a limited time, I am offering an exclusive opportunity for listeners of the Play Your Position podcast to connect with me privately and discuss your book project. If this sounds like you, head on over to playyourpositionpodcast.com forward slash book and follow the instructions on the page. Again, that's playyourpositionpodcast.com forward slash book. See you there. Thanks for listening to the Play Your Position podcast, where your story matters and we make it count at MaryLouKazer.com.